Good morning, everyone. This is Dawn here, uh, April 7th, Friday, to share a message with all of you, um, both on my personal channel and on my Twin Hearts Ablaze channel, um, about the person of Jesus and who he really is. So um, I'm going to read to you from some words I wrote this morning in my journal. Um, so sorry to read to you, but I didn't want to miss any of this the way I said it. I liked the way it came out. So here it is. I fell back asleep this morning thinking about April 3rd, 33 AD, the crucifixion. It is the first Friday in April, and the first week of April is always my holy week. For a while, my dream was lovely, all the memories of Jesus alive, and that is always what he was most to me, alive. He is alive, and I love him. I am alive, and he loves me. Those words were written for a 70s church musical called Celebrate Life. And they represent the simple truth of how I have always seen Jesus in this life or any other. It's easy for me or any one of us to say, I do not have the life in me that Jesus had attained by opening himself, by emptying himself in the way that Paul would later describe so beautifully, and allowing the Spirit to move through him. Those of us who walked with Jesus witnessed it. We felt it wash over us every time we were in his presence. Jesus became the Christ. He rose from the dead and he lived again and continued his work by doing what he taught me most about, us most about, walking in the way, trusting that the way is always opening up. This is not just the story of the life of a man who lived and died and passed through the gates into an everlasting life. It is the story of your life. It is the story of my life. You are here to walk in the way of wholeness, to have life and to have it to the full. Jesus died because they crucified him. It was inevitable in many ways. Jesus lived because God so loved the world and every living thing that moves and breathes within it. Jesus is the cornerstone, the stone the builders rejected. And we ourselves are, as Paul wrote in Ephesians, no longer foreigners and strangers, but being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So there are two, um, two things I wanna share with you from the scripture today. And that is, I'm going to begin with a beautiful psalm that is precious to me. Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love endures forever. When hard-pressed, I cried to the Lord. He brought me into a spacious place. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? The Lord is with me. He is my helper. I look in triumph on my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. All the nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord, I cut them down. They surrounded me on every side, but in the name of the Lord, I cut them down. They swarmed around me like bees, but they were consumed as quickly as burning thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them down. I was pushed back and about to fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die, but live, and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine upon us. With bows and hands, join the festal Join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. 
You are my God and I will praise you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. That's from the Old Testament, Psalm 118. And now I want to turn to uh, Ephesians chapter 2. And um, this was uh, what Paul had to say. And he's talking here in this chapter about um, being reconciled through Christ. And he's speaking um, to the Jews and the Gentiles and how um, through Jesus the Christ, we are made one. I'm going to pick up with verse 14, chapter 2 of Ephesians. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one, and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household built on the foundation of the apostle and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So I hope that you see that. So first of all, Jesus to me, came for life that we might have life and have it to the full and this is always who Jesus is and today I'm recording this very close to noon um, on the first Friday in April some let's see 2,984 I think years later <laughs> so um, I'm sorry 1,000 oh whoa wow 1,984 years later fascinating 1984 feels very much like 1984 in some ways doesn't it that we're living in uh, 1984 being George Orwell's 1984 but aside back to Jesus so Jesus is he came to be life and to have life and to have it for the full and to be our forerunner and God lifted him up and Jesus the one that we rejected the one who was rejected became the cornerstone and yet that not just a cornerstone as some interpreted it through the ages for the church that was uh, used the name of Jesus Christ and you know that did carry a, a pure stream which I'm very interested in the reclamation of that stream but um, but became something other than what Jesus was but Jesus was not just the cornerstone for the church or for some select group Jesus is the cornerstone and though he was rejected by his own and by many many others through time including those who proclaim his name Jesus remains the cornerstone. He's the rock of ages. And not just Jesus, but by around that chief cornerstone is we are we are the temple of God. We are, it says, in him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So this is who you are and this is who we are. And so reflected in the person of Jesus Christ, we see this. We become with him the cornerstone. We become the dwelling place for God. We become that individually and together we are a holy temple. So in this time in our world of great tragedy, I'm thinking here of Syria in particular myself, but there are so many things everywhere and great uh, grief because many of us see the ways that perhaps we have wandered or strayed or erred in some way. Let us today and every day return to that cornerstone and become that dwelling place for the Spirit of God to move in us and through us. 
many blessings um, this week and as we go into next week, which is on the calendar, Holy Week, um, you know, may you feel the presence of the one called Jesus who is still with us and who remains the cornerstone. Much love to you.